Hey, it's Chris. Today I want to share with you my ultra productive desk setup featuring an iPad Pro, a MacBook Pro, and an ultra wide monitor. Now, what this setup really is about is about getting the most out of Apple's universal control, which is a killer feature which lets you use the same keyboard and mouse to control up to three Macs and iPads. Only recently have I really been getting a lot of use out of universal control, and what I love about it is that it lets the Mac be the Mac and the iPad be the iPad. It's not like Sidecar, which ended up just turning your iPad into a Mac extension. What's great here is there's no setup required. You just move your cursor to the edge of the display, and it travels magically through space to the device or screen next to it. And I gotta tell you, I was so surprised and happy when I realized that Universal Control was gonna work with my non-Apple LG display. All right, because now I can dedicate that ultra-wide screen space to the main project that I'm working on. But then I can glance over at the iPad Pro, reference something related to that project, or even create an asset there that can be dragged up onto the project, all while having a browser with my research and maybe some music open over on the MacBook Pro. So effectively, this gives me a three-monitor setup without actually having to buy three different monitors. And what a universal control setup like this really does, if you think about it, is it allows for multi-device multitasking instead of just multi-app multitasking on a single device. Gotta tell you, I'm loving the fast and seamless copy and paste between the devices, that's a huge plus. And it's also so cool that the iPad gestures are supported whether you're using an actual Mac trackpad or just an external trackpad, plus, stage manager, but we're gonna save that for a different video. Now, here's what it comes down to for me, okay? It's not about trying to come up with some crazy look or vibe, or it's not about just trying to max out either. It literally comes down to being more efficient. I am more productive with this setup. I think you could call this peak Apple ecosystem. And I just gotta say, I ain't hating it. All right, so let me tell you about the actual setup. I consider the 14 inch MacBook Pro here to be the brains of the setup. It's a MaxBook Pro, so it's got the M1 Max inside, and it's basically maxed out in almost every category. I've got it situated over to the right side of the desk because it gets less glare there in the mornings from my window, and it's actually perched there on top of a 12 South curve stand, which lets me hide the Scarlett Solo, the audio interface, which I use for podcasts and voice voiceovers out of sight. Now here's what I really love. Got one Thunderbolt cable coming out of the Mac, heading over into a 40 inch LG ultra wide monitor. Now this Mac and this monitor were basically made for each other. The resolution here is super crispy. I just wish it got a little bit brighter. That's my only complaint. But like I've said before, 40 inches here is the Goldilocks solution for me. Not too big, not too small. But I've also got 12 terabytes of storage plugged in, not to the Mac, but to the back of the monitor, which again, lets me just relay that over to the Mac via one cable. And then we've got the trusty 12.9 inch iPad Pro sitting on the left of the desk. And it's decked out with two of my favorite accessories, the magic keyboard and the paper-like screen protector. And I've got it over to the left because mentally, it just seems more balanced to have the Mac over on the right and the iPad over on the left but practically it actually makes the most sense for me to put it centered underneath the display because then I can just glance down at it. It's just a little bit more convenient. The only problem with that is that it looks more cluttered sitting next to the keyboard and the trackpad. And I could just put the iPad on a stand or something, but I keep it on the Magic Keyboard because it's great to just grab and go. Also, you can just tell from the display setup here that I am using a Daily Tech wallpaper pack to have kind of a unified look without everything looking exactly identical. So I'll link the wallpaper packs up down in the description in case you need to spice things up your own self. So what are some of the unique benefits that I've been enjoying by having the Mac and the iPad sharing this desk space? For one thing, even with Stage Manager and external display support on the iPad, finally, the Mac is still more powerful when it comes to windowing and being able to use a window management app and have one, two, three, six things up on this external ultra wide at once, right? If I'm working on a project that has multiple pieces, I wanna see them all at once. And then if I wanna drag something over from either the Mac or the iPad right into one of those notes or documents, oh. I'd also say the Mac screen has the highest resolution of all my devices, so if I'm grabbing some screenshots or some screen recordings, I do that over on the Mac as well. I mean, obviously the Mac doesn't have Apple Pencil support, and there's just sometimes when I get in this mode and I need to make a handwritten note to get this idea out of my head, and it's so nice to have the Apple Pencil and the iPad Pro right there on deck so I can unleash that creativity in handwriting form and then turn that unleashing of creativity into some sort of real reality over on the ultra wide. And especially to be able to drag and drop stuff between the two devices to transfer them without having to use something like iCloud or AirPlay or Dropbox, which by the way, I used to think AirPlay was the best 
but you just can't beat a drag and drop across two devices. Now I did sort of have to tweak some things on the Mac in order to get this to work, not in terms of setup, but just in terms of usability. So I used to have my dock at the bottom, but I've moved that over to the left because sometimes I do stick the iPad right underneath the ultra wide and it's hard to like target just the dock and not move the cursor down onto the iPad that way. So the other thing I had to do was tweak the hot corner setup in my settings because I like to use hot corners for things like quick notes or for just showing the desktop really quickly. But if I have the iPad sitting over by that left-hand corner there, the ultra wide, I don't wanna activate a hot corner right there on accident. I gotta tell you, I'm loving my desk setup as much as I ever have. If there's one tweak to be made, it's probably to do some better cord management, get some longer Thunderbolt cords. So to say I'm ultra happy with this desk setup would be an understatement, a massive, massive understatement. I really do feel more productive here. I like this setup as much as I've ever liked any setup. And that includes a setup that used to have the 47 inch ultra wide. I like this better. I mean, I also like that I can take this setup with me on a trip and use sidecar and be very productive when I'm mobile. Obviously I'm missing out on that ultra wide when I'm mobile, but who could ask for something better? Two awesome screens right next to each other that work together, that have these very unique capabilities and that when they get together, almost like the Avengers, they assemble, it transforms into just something unmatched. I'll just say there's a reason why people have called universal control the coolest new software feature Apple's done in years. It's magical, it's impressive, and it just works most of the time. I'm using the beta right now, and every now and then I have to reconnect my iPad display. I think that'll get worked out. I'll tell you this, it's working better than Sidecar basically ever did already and it's only in beta. Before Universal Control came out, there were times when I wanted to use Sidecar and I just didn't want to. I couldn't bring myself to do it because it was so glitchy. So coming back full circle, we're back to this notion of you have the iPad Pro, you got the MacBook Pro, both Pro devices, but I can only get my Pro software over on the Mac. Don't know what Apple's thinking there, how they're calculating behind the scenes, but I do know that Apple wants these devices to be complimentary, not competitive. Just like the iPad doesn't have a Final Cut Pro or Logic or Xcode, the Mac also doesn't have a detachable keyboard or a screen that you can actually touch, much less an Apple Pencil. Obviously, if you buy both devices, then you don't have to make a trade-off. You're not saying, I'm going to get either this or that. You can have it all, it just costs a buttload. I don't know off the top of my head, so I'm just gonna flash it on the screen here, but this is what it would cost you to get this config of MacBook Pro, iPad Pro with this monitor. You know, I guess it shouldn't be surprising that if you spend more money, you can have cooler, more interesting experiences. Just look at Lamborghinis versus Corollas, I suppose, right? So yes, I'm excited here. Please get subscribed. There's so much more to talk about. I never have time to make all the ideas for things that I wanna talk about. Also, you wanna get yourself subscribed to the newsletter, that comes out on Fridays, and there's a very good reason why you wanna to subscribe to it. That reason is that it puts the discovery of both apps and accessories and other things on autopilot so that you don't have to go out and find all this cool stuff. We find it for you, stick it in your inbox, and you're delighted. Also, there's a podcast, that comes out on Fridays too, and people say it's kinda of like hanging out with a friend in audio format. Talk about behind the scenes, what's going on with the business, and also just how I am using Apple stuff. Stuff like this setup. So if you want that stuff, it's all linked up down in the description, including those wallpapers. So check it out, and I'll catch you in the next video. Later.